Hello and welcome to Learn to Create Games. Today we will look at audio in Unity. So we look at topics such as audio source, audio clip and playing and muting a sound. So let's get started. So first we will start to create a brand new folder. So again we'll create a brand new folder for the audio example. So go to create and folder. We rename this folder audio and we'll include all the assets for this example in this folder. Then we will create an empty object. This object will be used to manage the audio and especially to manage keyboard input and play the audio accordingly. So this object will be called play sound. So once this is done, we can create a brand new script. This script will be attached to the empty object and is called play sound. So again, as we can see, we have the start and update function by default. The second thing we will do is to add audio files to the actual empty object. So here I've got a few files I could uh, import, not import, but add to my object. So again, I'm going to take it and drag and drop it to the object play sound. As you can see in the inspector window, the audio source has been added correspondingly into play the sound hurt and again play on awake is not ticked so that the play the sound doesn't play straight away once this is sound this is done i can edit my script so in this script what i will do is quite simple i will actually detect the key input it will be the key called p and whenever this key is pressed, I will play the sound that is included in the audio source component part of my empty object. So again, input get key down and key code dot p means that we'll be looking for the key p on the key on the keyboard, p uppercase. And when this is done, we're gonna access a component on the current object. So again, the component would be the audio source. And then for this audio source, we will actually play it. So again, as you can see here, this is the audio source component on the object. So again, we access the audio source component using this syntax, and then we just press play. So again, we play the audio source, which is the component of the game object, which is uh, attached to the script. So once this is done, we can check in the console window and there are no errors. And Effectively, we will have no errors there, so I'm going to clear it. And when this is done, I just need to take my script and drag and drop it onto my play sound empty object. So again, back to the project, taking the script and dragging and dropping it onto my empty object. As you can see, it has been added as a script component. And if I play my scene right now, and I actually press the P uppercase on my keyboard, you should hear the corresponding sound. So, so again, what I will do at this, at this stage is the idea of showing you that, yeah, I could actually add another uh, sound clip to my audio source. But the only issue is that I can't seem to be having two clips associated to one audio source. So the idea now is to be able to play two different sounds. So again, I will create another empty object called play two sounds. And again, the idea will be then to be able to associate two sounds to this object and being able to play them independently. So again, here I'm going to add an audio component. It's going to be again an audio source. So it's going to be the exact same. But the difference will be that first, I suppose, play on awake should be unticked, and I will do that later on. And then I will actually create a brand new script called play to sound. So again, this script will uh, make it possible to play two different sounds. So as I open my script, there are a few things I can do. First, I will create two public variables, one called audio1 and one called audio2. And the type will be audio clip. So again, just, just to summarize, the audio source is a bit like, um, I suppose, a stereo system. And you have a bit, uh, you can play different tapes. And then my first tape will be audio one, and the second tape will be audio two. So again, what I can do then is choose what tape I can actually uh, play on my audio system. 
So again, on this script, I've got two different public variables, audio1 and audio2, they are audio clips. And then I will say in the function update, if I press the key called I, I will play a particular sound. So again, in my case, I will play, play the first sound, which is audio1. And to be able to say that the audio source should play audio1, we have to select what is called an active clip. So again, I'm going to say gameObject.getComponent.AudioSource and then I will say that the, the clip, so the sound that has to be played, is audio1. So again, dot .clip equals audio1. So I'm just saying that the actual sound to be played is audio1. So again, I can copy and paste this code. Now, change it slightly. And I'm going to look for the letter called O, so O uppercase. And again, the current clip will be audio 2. Then I will add a very simple message. So I will add a message to know exactly where we are standing. So again, I will print that we have pressed the key called I. And then I will just again make uh, create a message saying that I pressed the key called O, so uppercase. Now again if I play my scene, it should normally play a sound. Uh, the, only, the only thing that I need to do now again is to tick the box uh, play on awake so that it doesn't play straight away and then to drag and drop my script. Once I've done that, I've got two empty placeholders in the script called audio1 and audio2. So again, I have to select two different audio clips. Again, those are there by default if you have imported the character controllers, but you can choose any clip of your choice. So again, I put footstep 01 and footstep 02. So at this stage, we should be pretty much ready to go. If you look at the console window and whenever I press the keys I and O, you should be seeing some corresponding messages which means that if I press the key called I, I should have a message saying you've pressed the key called I in the console, and the same will apply if I press the key called O. So while I'm increasing the sound there and nothing happens is because there is something else I need to do. And this something is to play the sound. Some of you might have guessed that already, but in my script, if I go back to my script, I've set the clip, I printed something in the console, but I haven't actually yet played any sound. So for each of these key, what I need to do is to play the corresponding clip. So again, gameObject.getComponentAudioSource.play. And now we should be ready to go, which means that after specifying what clip should be selected or played, I will play it accordingly. So again, I will Add this code, save it, and now if I place, play the different keys I and O and look at the console window, you should hear the sound footstep 01 or footstep 02 accordingly. So at this stage, everything works properly, and what I'd like to do really is to be able to mute the sound. So to do that, I'm going to create a Boolean variable called muted, and depending on the value of this variable, I will set the volume to 0 or 1. So again, in the start function, I'm going to set this variable to false, so again, the sound is not muted, it should be played, but depending on whether I press the M key, so again, this is going to be a toggle effect, which means that by pressing the M key, the variable muted will be either set to true or false. So again, if I press the M key, I'm going to use the syntax equal and exclamation mark, which means it's going to be the opposite. So again, if it was true, it will become false. And if it's false, it will become true. Then what we'll do is check for the value of the variable called muted, depending on, so depending on its value, we'll set the volume to either 0 or 1. So again, if muted is 1, which is that it's, the sound is muted, so muted is true, then um, I will actually make set the volume to zero. And the same again, if muted is false, then the volume should be one. So again, we could we copy the same code and paste it, and again, set the volume to one. What I will also add is uh, just a few messages. So again, 
if the sound is muted, I'm going to crimped sound muted. And if the sound is not muted, so the sound is on, basically, I will just print sound is on, sound on. So, so just so that we have a bit of information in the console window. So again, if I save this script and play the scene, I will successively mute the sound and then try to press the keys O or I and then unmute the sound again and do the exact same. And you should, in the first case, not hear anything. In the second case, hear the sound. So again, here I press O, again I, so you can, you can hear them. And then if I mute the sound and press these keys again, you shouldn't be able to hear them anymore. Well, that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And again, if you want to learn more about Unity, please check the website learntocreategames.com. See you. Bye.